Oh my god, hi. This is Devin from Disney Adult, a podcast brought to you by the Trident Network. On Disney Adult, we bring together Chicago comedians to watch and discuss Disney movies from the perspective of adults. In these movies, there are things we love, things we hate, things that maybe haven't aged so well, and things that are timeless. Uh, the Trident Network's wonderful podcasts, including Disney Adult, can be found anywhere you get your podcasts. Subscribe today. Quintuplets. Pretty cool, huh? In a word, that's a lot of babies. The Grover family? I'm Jamie Grover, part of the Grover family. What a weird coincidence. Okay, so it's not a coincidence. You see, this is my story. And yeah, it's one of those girl finds herself even though she didn't know she was lost stories. But I promise you, it's not going to be lame and it's not going to be boring. Okay? Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Hey, Erica. Hi. Welcome to D-Commentaries. <gasps> Thank you. Welcome to you. Welcome to Erica. And welcome to all of our listeners. Today, we're talking about Quince. Yay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Allie can't even pretend for five seconds. Okay. Well, before we get to that, Erica... Our lovely guest, introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, I am Erica. I am a writer in LA. And <laughs> gosh, what is there to even say? Oh my God. And that rhymed. Um, yeah, I'm a writer. I do like um a comedy show out here as well at Westside Comedy Theater. What? And I have two cats at the moment. You have two cats? One is mine and then I'm fostering another. But she was like failing their socialization program because she's so scared and she's so shy. So she just sits oh. and hops in a saddle. Oh. oh, what's her name? Her name was originally Minnie, but I didn't like that. So her name is Rizzo right now. Nice. Oh, that's amazing. And what is your cat's name? Dragon. Dragon. <laughs> Yeah, Erica is is downselling. She is a very talented and very funny writer. I know her because we were on a video sketch. Uh, well, not on the same team, but we were in the same organization. And she wrote very, very funny sketches that um, my husband got to be in some of them and very entertaining overall. And I know Erica because we're friends on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> follow each other on twitter yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes and erica is also part of the trinet leadership so she's a, re a reason why we are here today yeah in general here uh, without you baby but you're still with me in my dreams <laughs> okay sorry. why are you like sad singing <laughs> okay it's a saturday morning i'm not in my bed i'm sad <laughs> I know we did this to you I'm sorry mm. all right let's just dive right in um Quince was released August 18th 2000 so we're still in the monthly release phase of uh decoms also I just want to s remind everyone or I guess say for the first time because this is the first of the two episodes that's coming out we recorded the other me which is our next episode we recorded it before this one so Ellie and I have been time traveling and we may or may not reference things that actually happened in the in the latter episode. We'll try not to, but just uh, wanted to put that out there in case we accidentally say something. You're like, what are they talking about? You'll find out. Just listen to our The Other Me episode. OK, uh, Quince was directed by Bill Corcoran, who basically just directs TV movies. That's his thing. He hasn't done any other decoms. That's basically his thing. TV movies. It was written by uh, Matthew Weissman, um, who also wrote Teen Wolf, and Gregory Pincus, who wrote Alley Cat's Strike and uh, the not decom Little Big League. We talked about Gregory Pincus when we talked about Alley Cat's Strike, and Al said, I haven't seen Quince in forever, but I know it's better than Alley Cat's Strike. So we'll see if she was correct or <laughs> she still feels that way. <laughs> 
<laughs> but there are definitely narrative similarities between that movie and this one for sure. The cast is as follows. Kimberly J. Brown, our gal, playing whoa, whoa. Jamie Grover. Daniel Roebuck played Jim Grover, her dad. He is a delight. He's a character actor. He's been in literally everything. And um, is but, going to be in literally everything. Yes. If you look I at his just IMDb gonna see it. <laughs> I know. So this guy has 18 things in some f- stage of production right now. 18 credits on IMDb. <laughs> Insane. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I've never seen it either. It was remarkable. Um, he, We've talked about Agent Cody Banks before on this show. He played Cody's dad on in Agent Cody Banks. Mm. So he might be recognized for that. But he's been he's one of those people who's been like in one episode of literally everything. Mm-hmm. We love a character actor. Um, <clears throat> Elizabeth Moorhead played Nancy Grover. Um, she hasn't had quite as big of a career, but she was in, uh, in f- the show Flipper and a sh- I believe a Disney show called One World that had Brandon Baker in it from Johnny Tsunami. Oh, nice. He did something else after Johnny Tsunami. Good for him. Yeah. I had never heard of this in my life. Uh, When I clicked on it, I honestly just assumed it was going to be some kind of soap opera, but it wasn't. So uh, I don't know what it was, but if uh, any of you listeners out there watched it, uh, tell us what it's about. Shadia Simmons played Zoe. You'll recognize her from The Color of Friendship and pre-recognize her from Zine on the Sequel, where she takes over for uh, Raven Simone. Um, she's great. Jake Epstein, a uh, delightful, tiny little Jewish man, <laughs> plays uh, Brad, her other best friend. Jamie's other best friend. <laughs> deeply emotional Brad, who I hope we discuss. Yes, we will. Yes. We will absolutely discuss Brad. Who's Canadian? Yeah. Well, these were fil- this and the other me were both filmed in Toronto. <gasps> so we've got a lot of Canadian. Oh, actors. we love Toronto. Mm hmm. Uh, Brad or uh, Jake Epstein was in uh, or is going to be in Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. Um, he was also on Degrassi, The Next Generation. Um, and more recently, he's been in uh, Designated Survivor, Suits, and a ton of Hallmark movies <laughs> with a sweet, sweet taste of Murdoch Mysteries. Yes, of course. You can't be from Canada and not have been in Murdoch Mysteries. Yeah. Erica, literally every Erica. single time we have a cast of people from Canada, at least one of them, if not like seven of them, has been in Murdoch Mysteries. Murdoch it's Mysteries. like the law and order of Toronto. I love that. Yes. Um, I'm really excited for Val and I's next podcast. Two Americans discuss Murdoch Mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> no joke, Al. I had the idea today that we should do a podcast about character actors because we're both so obsessed with them. Yeah, I'm into it. Like, I want to call it something like, I know that guy or what's oh, that guy? Let's in? do it. <laughs> I'll see you in five years when we finish this one. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do two at once. Um, OK, uh, Robin Duke played Fiona. Robin is a alumni of Second City Toronto, of SNL. Uh, she was in Groundhog Day and more recently she was in Schitt's Creek because she is like best friends with uh, Catherine O'Hara. Wow. Um, they're like high school friends. Um, so they go way back. None of my high school friends me. are famous. <laughs> I know, right? Um, if you are trying to figure out who she was in Schitt's Creek, she was the uh, clothing store owner who David goes and works for for a while in like season yeah. two. I don't know. I don't know exactly when it happened, but it's like the ridiculous, like drapey clothes. That's her. And then uh, Vince Carraza or Carraza played Albert, the agent. Um, He was in Jet Jackson. He is going to be in Cheetah Girls, uh, but he mostly is a voice actor now. Oh, fun. Good for him. A lot of video games and stuff. Yeah. The the money of fame without the fame. Right. Is voice acting. The perfect, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know which is which is better, voice acting or character acting. Probably voice acting, um, but they're both pretty pretty sweet. Yeah. As we will mention in the other me, there is a moment where they're filming a commercial, and the cameraman has like one line. His name is Joseph Motiki, and he is also in the other me as the VJ. We brought him up last when we were recording the other me. Next we didn't know week. what he was in Quince. Is he the one who has like grills on his teeth? Yes, I think. I think that's who you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. He was like, can mom get down with the picture with the kids? Yes! Or something? Yeah, that's and it. You're like, yeah. what? 
Yeah. 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 That's him. He's only in these two movies. I don't know why. (laughs) (laughs) He says he's tiny parts of both these movies. And then Don Knotts plays Governor Healy. Don Knotts, you might recognize from classics such as The Andy Griffith Show, Three's Company. Um, He was also in the movie Pleasantville. I mean, he is like, you know, old school comedy, like royalty. Like, you will recognize his face, if not know who he is. I, well, maybe not. I did audibly gasp in the opening credits when it said (laughs) special, or what did it say? It was like special feature by Don Knotts. And I said it out loud and looked at my roommate and we were both like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, he is, I I like, I didn't pay any attention to the credits. So I literally, I audibly gasped when he came onto the, the, yeah. camera like I was like what <laughs> so that was pretty fun for me audibly gasped when his character changed so drastically within two scenes oh I had no 100 consistent through line or, or motivation or behavior no, but he was he delivered some funny lines so that was what he was being paid to do so he did it all right here's the synopsis it's another long one Jamie is 13 and really enjoying being an only child until her mother announces that she's having quintuplets. Jamie is almost forgotten by her family and just about everyone else as the limelight is fixed firmly on the five little wonders who immediately become headline news. Jamie gets more upset as her parents miss school meetings and even her big art show. Will her parents eventually realize that they have six kids? Okay, so first of all, Erica, I forgot to mention, I do not read the synopsis before I read it, like on this recording. So I haven't read this yet. I literally this just, line is wrong. I, the first line is literally wrong. I I I agree. I, the whole he, thing is wrong. They don't. <laughs> the, part of this who is else is like, forgetting her besides her parents. I know, and also like the last line, we can't even say why the ending is wrong because it's a spoiler, but right. it's wrong. Um, yeah. Bad synopsis. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're terrible. This is a terrible one. But like she wishes for, she's not like, she's the happiest only child. She's like, I don't like this. Right. She can't stand the pressure. I agree. Doesn't make any sense. Well, any hoozy. Now that we're past the business, uh, Erica, what were your first impressions? Or, or you can tell us a little bit about like why you wanted to be on this episode. Like, do you have a history with Quince? Yes. Um, me and, you know, as I was doing some research here, um, there's actually a less than one in six million chance for Quince to happen naturally. Whoa. And I know it wasn't addressed. We don't know. Like, we don't know if they were like trying, if they did a little magic, if they added some eggy eggs, like we don't know what was going on. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, so no, I don't have any relation because it's incredibly unlikely to ever happen. <laughs> but uh, I remembered that scene when she ripped up, or is that a spoiler? I don't know. What are the rules? Can I say whatever? Uh, that is a spoiler. I remember an emotional moment in the movie <laughs> that for some reason resonated with me as a kid. Okay. And like, honestly, still hit when I watched it this week. So mm-hmm. that's why when I saw Quince, I was like, oh my God, let's do Quince. I'm also a former nanny. Ah, Love yes. babies. Loved picking up on all of the wrong things and the weird things that happen with these babies. <laughs> Uh, for example, at one point, Fiona says, like, baby number two eats every 4.5 hours. Literally, no, no. <laughs> if a baby is waiting more than three hours to eat, like, that's really bad. Yeah. That's a bad. Newborn? It should be two yeah. and a half to three hours. <laughs> Four and a half hours. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Abuse. No, you're right. <laughs> I know. I know. You're, like, starving a child. <laughs> so, okay. um. Uh, what, did you like notice anything this time or like, did anything sort of pop out at you that you didn't remember? When was the last time you had watched it before? Like over 10 years. Okay, cool. I probably watched it in 2000, like five times. Right. Didn't watch it. (laughs) Anything that popped out? I had forgotten about the narration aspect of it. Mm, Like I had mm, totally forgotten that that was the whole way they tell the story yes and um i remember the agent i forgot about the friends i forgot about the art teacher Mm -hmm. and how involved the art teacher is Mm -hmm. um yeah i pretty much only remembered that one emotional scene (laughs) (laughs) so no that makes sense i kind of have that same experience like when as we've been rewatching these like 
each one there's like one or two moments that I that are like like anchored in my brain and they're completely floating by themselves there's like nothing else from the movie that's attached to them at all um Al what about you what were your first impressions oh thanks Val um what wh- wowza <laughs> um <laughs> It wasn't okay. You 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 might be surprised that I'm gonna say this. It wasn't as bad as Alley Cat Strike. Uh, no, me. I 100 okay, percent agree, cool. and I have thoughts on why, but we'll talk about that. Um, Alley Cat Strike is so bad. Which, sorry to a uh, listener of the pod, Eric. Uh, I know that's your favorite movie, but I'm so sorry. It's so bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Quince, um, Quince was not like fine. It was fine. Um, I'm going to give it a five and a half out of okay. 10. Um, so like better than five, but not more, but not by much. Erica's eyes just bugged <laughs> out of her head. Erica, she's, she's always a harsh critic. So that's actually pretty good for her. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I <laughs> real, I hate narration. This one was a little different though, because I mm-hmm. did appreciate the, but bank out, uh, breaking <laughs> of the fourth wall of it. Mm. Like I did, like that it wasn't just like a this is me and i'm you know i'm, I'm gonna explain everything that we yeah could have i like that you. they like pulled her out of scenes and like did freeze frames like that was yeah, yeah. that was fun um i do not like children it was a lot of screaming children for me <laughs> Uh, so that does, doesn't help it score, um, because I do not want children. Uh, so therefore I was like, okay, how much screaming do we have to listen to? Um, and I thought that it, it had, uh, it was, it was fine. It was fine. Ah, whatever. <laughs> it was fine. Val, what were your first impressions? Thanks, Al. Um, I, I liked it. I definitely did not like it as much as I used to like it like when I watched it as a young person, which is not super surprising. Um, I definitely liked it more than Alley Cat Strike because here is my theory on the difference between these two movies. Alley Cat Strike, like the narration was kind of annoying, but like the biggest issue with Alley Cat Strike was the acting was terrible. Top to bottom, it was horribly acted. This movie is well acted. So it doesn't, it, like it doesn't get bogged down as much by the extra stuff um, because it's it's still executed well. Um, I was not the biggest fan of like all the pop outs and the fake outs. Mm. Um, I I was like, I don't really feel like being tricked right now. <laughs> like I just want to like know what's well, like every five seconds too. Like yeah. once or twice would be fun, but like every scene started with <laughs> just kidding. Right. Which exactly. was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. And like even to the point where they were doing the exact same like fake out more than once and i was like okay just you've run out of ideas like you don't need to keep doing this um so that kind of um annoyed me like almost from the beginning i i did not remember that she talks to the camera like i had no recollection whatsoever that she did that so as soon like a literally opening moment where she just like (laughs) i was like Oh, okay. We're doing this now. Um, but she's like, I really like Kimberly J. Brown. I think that she is a good actor. I think that she, I like, I, my favorite parts of this movie, honestly, were like the really emotional moments, the really like earnest moments. There weren't that many of them, but when they were happening, they were really nice. They were like believable. Um, she had good chemistry with her parents, especially with her dad. And uh, like the message was good. It just got like kind of obscured by some of the other ornamentation that they were doing but yeah i enjoyed it and thought it was well casted well acted okay erica did you have any favorite quotes or moments from the film so many (laughs) um favorite quotes or moments let me think about moment i know i have a favorite quote i'm gonna say that and so let me think about a moment um when jamie shows her friend z her first drawing and it's just like <laughs> cash like here's this drawing and it's like fucking really amazing <laughs> that's a fun moment mm-hmm. the dad when he's like coming to my office and then they sit on the <laughs> toilet <laughs> great moment um anytime brad is there and then my favorite quote i would give every blue ribbon i have for one look like your mom gives you 
when you come home. Oh. Like, damn, Brad, what is happening at your house? Like, I know. what? Oh. All right, Al, what about you? Oh, thanks, Val. I did want to mention, too, from the narration part of this, in the very beginning, it feels like she's introing, like, a TLC Trading Spaces TV show. <laughs> she, like, walks out of her house, and she's like, this is my house, and here's my town, and two families are going to switch and redecorate their living rooms. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. I was like, that's, it just felt very, like, HGTV or TLC. Totally. Um, um. My fa- one of my favorite quotes was when they tell uh, I keep wanting to say Marnie and it's not Marnie it's Jamie <laughs> um, when they tell Jamie that they're pregnant and she's like congratulations mom and they're like no she's really 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 <laughs> pregnant and then it goes into a song that goes uh oh here we go now <laughs> and i just thought that was a really fun cut of like yeah. really really pregnant uh oh <laughs> here's the storyline um one of my favorite moments was when the mom was pregnant she started having contractions and she clearly pushes in the um pillow that was acting as her pregnant yes! stomach <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was this is a throwaway line that uh, Zoe and Jamie are like in their house and she goes let's go up to my room and listen to that CD and it's like that a CD <laughs> yes <laughs> and I was like oh remember when we used to like buy CDs you just like sit and listen to it you don't do anything else <laughs> Uh, also that's like the equivalent to like i'll have a beer like the generic like in a television show like i'll have a lager (laughs) right give me one of those drinks (laughs) um yeah you know the movie's not it's not bad it's just like all right we get it yeah, I don't know. All right, Val, what are your, some of your favorite <laughs> quotes and moments? Well, I definitely also loved the stuff into my office for a sec. Like her dad works at like Menards or something. Yeah. And like, <laughs> so there's like, Jo- it looks like if Joanne Fabrics and Home Depot like had a baby. Um, so he's like in the craft section and then all of a sudden they just round a corner and there's toilets. It's very funny. Um, <laughs> at one point, um, I just love all the like the the 2000s ish like slang. Like at one point, Zoe goes, don't be a dragola, Jamie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I just thought was adorable. At some point, I think I can't remember who says this to who, but some one of the kids goes, Great job, you stupid genius, you. I want to say it was Jamie to Brad, but it was very cute. Poor Brad. Poor Brad. (laughs) Stupid genius. Like, (laughs) leave him alone. He's going through so much. No, but it was like a like a loving thing. But it was, yeah, totally. The dad when at the beginning when the agent first shows up, he goes, Did someone make a wish to the diaper genie? (laughs) Just funny. Or maybe it was Jamie who said that, one of them. Oh, this was pretty profound by my estimation sometimes when someone tells you not to be selfish they are selfish oh man that wow, resonated wow yeah <laughs> and then i didn't get this verbatim but the art teacher at one point says something to the effect of some of the most successful people in the world went d- never finished high school and some college graduates amount to nothing that and also resonates. he has yeah. really good like a lot of his lines are really good like mm-hmm. profound little yeah nuggets yeah. And he's a good i liked teacher. him a like, lot yeah he's a great like mentor uh, yeah figure also i don't know if we mentioned it earlier but the actor who plays him um he was also a broadway guy oh, oh really cool. mm-hmm. yeah because i, I had that. seen i had looked him up on imdb and his uh like background was come from away like his like main picture um and he was on Broadway. He was in Mamma Mia. He was in the Spelling Bee. He was in like two other things, but he's Broadway. He was guy. in Spelling Bee. Oh my god! Cool. Yeah, That's so cool. You know what? I just realized I totally skipped him when we went. I thought the cast. you did, and so part of me was like, yeah. I wanted to mention this, but like, that's okay. Yeah. Well, real quick, like his name is James Call, and he's also like a character actor. Aside from being in, in stage stuff, he's been in Murdoch Mysteries. He was also in Suits along with. Mm-hmm. Brad. Um, he's also in Schitt's Creek. Um, and he's also been in a bunch of holiday TV movies. So these yeah. guys are all in the same stuff. There's like a small world in Canada, it looks like. Other than that, like in terms of like moments, I, I like I said earlier, I really liked all the emotional moments. I thought that they were really uh well done. And all of the even the kids like held their own in those scenes and did a great job. 
All right. Uh, anything else anyone wants to bring up before we go on to Spoiler City? I don't think so. I feel like a lot of things that I can mention can be after after we yeah. have traveled. Awesome. Let's do it. All right. We are recently birthed, completely naked. We have no tops. We are in Spoiler City. Um, <laughs> Dude, like we didn't have one. to take our tops off. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to take our tops off because we were born without tops. OK, <laughs> um, welcome to Spoiler City. We spoil the movie. Um, I will go through uh, all of the points. As if I am the narrator of this movie. <laughs> wow. Sweet, sweet Al narrating a movie. <laughs> this is what the listeners want. All right, here we go. So we start off with uh, Marnie. Just kidding. It's Jamie. Ooh, Kimberly J. Brown. Um, she <laughs> intros, um, as you heard from our cold open from lovely Erica, she is uh, kind of going back in time and describing the story of her life of the last year and a half of having Quince in her family. Um, and the fav- the best part about this is it just goes, that's a lot of babies. <laughs> um, so we see the intros of the babies in the newspaper. We see intro mom and dad. Mom is pretty scatterbrained in her life. And dad is, is, is trying to finish school so he can get more money at work. So they're your typical family with a kid of one. And we go to school. We meet her friends. Friends, um, Zoe and Brad, who are very cool and one of the best parts of this movie. Um, and we see her town and she talks to Zoe and Zoe's like, but science isn't your thing. And it, we kind of learn how there's this pressure from her family to be super smart because it's report card day and she's not doing well in school, but Brad is doing well in school and Zoe's doing well in school. But um, Jamie is kind of struggling a little bit and she doesn't want to let her parents down. She feels this pressure for them from them them to be really good in school. And she wants to go to George Washington Science Magnet School, which is a high school that that gives you the opportunities to go to college, which I don't know any 14 year olds who were this worried about getting into college. But here we are. Um, Oh, you're not from Deerfield. (laughs) (laughs) I am not. (laughs) So then we find out that mom works for the newspaper and we find out that uh, it's very suffocating that her parents want her to succeed. She just feels this this pressure and she can't talk to them about it because she doesn't want to let them down. And then uh, Brad wins the science fair because Brad is very smart and her parents are there. And we see that Brad has no parents. Um, He does have parents. They're just not there. (laughs) He says that um, uh, Jamie's parents are like, your parents are going to be really proud. And he says, they'll be relieved. Yeah, and there's no explanation for what that. Does that. And we mean? don't under yeah. like we get no context from it. It's like, are they spies and they can't be there? Like, where are, are they that's spies? the next movie? It's just Quince 2, where are Brad's parents? <laughs> <laughs> and they go on a quest to find them. Um, and they've been stuck in a cave for 15 years. Okay, I don't know. Okay, this is good, Erica. Write this down. You're a writer in your life. Um, <laughs> yeah, <you are>. <laughs> 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 okay, so then she comes home and you can tell that mom and dad are stressed and they're like excited, but they have a hard time telling Jamie that they're pregnant again. And when she do, she's like, I'm so excited. Like she actually was looking for change. She's looking for something new because she feels all this pressure from her parents. So she's excited that there's another kid. And then they're like, no, we're really, 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 really really <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> and so then we find out that they're having quince. Um, and then it really jump, hop, skip, and a jump, a uh, triple jump to the day that mom is having these babies. We see a small bingo montage of them montage. getting getting the, the nursery ready. And then mom pushes in her belly and the babies are coming out. <laughs> um, I would like to note that during the montage, which spans over all of the months of pregnancy, yes. her belly Ellie is not in any of yes, those months. she doesn't get. Pre- I was gonna say the exact same thing. <laughs> she doesn't even at the if end. You're when you're having like five children. You, you're. It's like you're wearing a hula hoop around your body. Like <laughs> yeah, you, you would be showing already. Like she would already be showing. Yeah, yeah. Like when she tells her. That she's yeah. Pregnant. Yeah. It, it's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, so then they're looking for shoes. 
It's just like a very stereotypical, like, oh, Dad no, freaking we're in out. labor. Dad's freaking out and forgetting everything. Like, I feel like that's in, like, every movie and show. Yeah. Like, ever. <laughs> right. Oh, she so, was, oh, so, oh, she, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And so then he forgets Jamie, which is the start of all of her problems in this movie. And so then he almost, like, leaves her behind, and then he stops, and she gets in. And then we have the babies. We have Adam. We have Becky, we have Charlie, we have Debbie, and we have Eddie. And if you didn't pick up on it, people, A, B, C, D, E, okay? Uh, So we have the five quints, and people are obsessed with Um, Can I interject? Please do, yes. In my deep scholarly research of movies, we're told like the 17 minute mark is the moment where the dramatic question, the big what, the big thing is going to be happening. I was like looking for like, okay, whatever they need at 17 minutes. Like that's when like Buzz meets Woody, you know, like that's the moment. Mm. She, if you pause it at exactly 17 minutes, it's when the dad goes, it's Quince. And she's like, yeah, Quince, like in the hospital. 17 minute mark and i was like whoa felt very satisfied <laughs> that's all <laughs> you should go back and check like you're like oh the movie here. this is gonna happen wow. to every movie i watch from now on thank you so much for telling me that no problem that's oh my so god that's cool. amazing okay so now folks we're only 17 minutes in <laughs> um, <laughs> um so people are obsessed with the quince in town um they are the first ever quince in the state we don't figure probably out wh- the country yeah probably. yeah we don't yeah. really figure out what state but since they are filming in toronto they probably want to make you feel like it's like pennsylvania or something but they don't ever really say it um, apparently says i was looking at like the trivia on IMDb, oh, uh-huh. and it—I it, guess like the governor's mansion is the Boston gov- or the Massachusetts oh, cool. governor's yeah, mansion, like very so New England. Yeah, so that's like I think where they're meant to be. Nice. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, then they they work as a team of three to like really keep the babies at bay, um, and it's really stressful. But they've you know are working together. Um, but it's truly so much crying babies they literally just recorded a baby and just kept pressing play after it would finish for seven seconds and they just like on repeat if you like it's a lot for me <laughs> and it's uh, unfortunate because like babies don't just cry the whole time right no even yeah. five of them even five like they literally most of the time it's just them sitting and looking like right. mm-hmm. it was it was very stressful for me as a reputation as a, a human um <laughs> And so then um, she's at school and her friends are trying to like convince her to do art club um, because like we had met the teacher, the really cool teacher before. And he's like, you should do art club. And Zoe's like, I'm an art club. You'll like art club. And she's like, no, I have to do science club. And so then they have a a nurse come where we have Catherine O'Hara's best friend from high school. She's the nurse. And she's like, I'm ready to take on five babies. This will be great. Um, And Jamie is like kind of tired of helping and like being the person who's like helping out the nurse um and she joins art club so she's not home all the time so this is she's finally convinced she's going to join art club um because she's like i don't want to be at home my parents aren't like really paying attention to me and also like i have five babies that i don't really want to take care of so this gets me out of the house but she does love the babies yes and the reason why she doesn't like fiona is because fiona numbers them and refuses to call them by their names and like all she cares about is like getting them on like a cycle like Mm -hmm. like controlling every single aspect of them and she's like they are human they are individual human beings i can't deal with this and that's like her impetus for going to our club it's not because she like just doesn't like her siblings yeah thank you and as an art club note she sees it as almost like like the way she thinks her parents are going to look at it like how parents would be like you're doing drugs Mm -hmm. like she's really like this deep she's like oh my god art club like i couldn't even well it's a big deal honestly so i guess i might as well say this now uh so i grew up an only child and i definitely related to her sense of like always being the focus of her parents and what they want And like my mom, I was also the child of an immigrant, which I think just amplifies that even further. And like my mom would try and get me to quit all of my extracurriculars like every year, like without fail. 
even though those were the things that were like giving me, like <sighs> teaching me more than a lot of my classes were like giving me an outlet, keeping me healthy, like all of the most important things I think you get from your extracurriculars in school. Um, and she would literally try to convince me to quit all of them all of the time. So like Whoa. <laughs> these parents were, are not nearly as intense as my uh, mom was, but I think that that is where that comes from. Mm -hmm. Like she, she does fear that like, cause her dad is all about plans. He has a plan for everything. Um, and, and she's afraid to like deviate from that plan because like that would, that in and of itself would disappoint him. And this yeah. is art club. Isn't part of the plan. Yeah. Thanks Val. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So now she's like no longer the center of attention. So she like feels that pressure is off a little bit because their her parents are starting to focus on something else. And then I wrote dot, dot, dot for now. <laughs> um, and so Fiona gets really overwhelmed and she leaves uh, almost with one of the children on her back. <laughs> problematic um also that, like irish just wondering yeah, the first fiona. generation fiona from ireland just thought i'd throw that yeah she does she's probably just having fun she's like guys i she showed up on set that day she's like i want to be irish yeah <laughs> cool you know what that'll give some depth to the movie you go ahead and do that yeah you're from kilkenny um <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jamie offers to take care of them, and then we see, have one of these weird cutaways where she takes care of them herself, and she grows arms, and it's really weird. And then she's like, "Just kidding." Um, and then right after, we have weird Albert uh, who comes to the door, <laughs> rings the doorbell, and they're like, "What is happening?" This is where we get that diaper genie line, um, and he is like a marketing guy, an advertising guy, and he's like, "We want to capitalize on your family. We have all these opportunities for you. We want you to be the face of our diapers." Um, and then we kind of cut back to school and we see that Jamie is actually really, really good at art. Yeah. Which is interesting because the first time she's asked to join art club, he's like, come to art club. And she's like, why? I don't do good in your class. And he's like, because it'll be fun. But I'm like, you obviously, like, you're really talented. Like you weren't, I don't know. Well, yeah. the she's really freakishly amazing. Right? Yeah. Well, the implication is that her grades go up when she feels less pressure. So I think that like she might have just sort of been bad at stuff because she just felt this like. Yeah. Immense... And when she can go have fun and like do yeah. art on her own for what she wants, then it's a little bit easier. Yeah. I, and the teacher is kind of just like he doesn't say I told you so, but he's kind of just like I knew like I knew you were really like this. <laughs> um, and Jamie starts to think that her new life plan kind of doesn't really involve science. This is where we start to get that mindset change from Jamie. Um, and then we see the advertising starts um, and it starts to get a little chaotic at home. And then Jamie talks to the teacher again about like being stressed at home. Um, so she comes back. There's I'm missing a lot there, but it's not important. Um, so she comes back home and she's like drawing in the nursery and her parents come in and one of the babies starts crying and they're like oh i went to bassinet number three because i know that charlie is crying you know how i knew it was charlie everyone because a b c c is the third letter that's how i knew he went to bassinet three okay <laughs> um and then he's and then jamie's like oh no that's not charlie and dad's like no i went to the right bassinet and she's like i switched up the babies on you to see if you know your own <laughs> children you dumbass um <laughs> and mom goes that's a terrible thing to say yeah <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. Uh, but also she's right. But she's right. Yeah. And so then uh, Jamie says, sometimes I wonder if you have five babies, not just one set of quints. And it kind of just like was a very real moment for the family. And dad apologizes. And she tries to talk to her mom about not entering the science fair. And then it's parent teacher conferences. And the two kids who are left are Brad, who doesn't have parents because they've been <laughs> stuck in a cave for 15 years <laughs> and we have Jamie whose parents have five other children who they care more about um and so she gets really upset um and Brad tries to relate to be like my parents don't come either mm -hmm. and she goes yeah but it's different for you your parents never come <laughs> <laughs> Brad is really great. She okay. treats Brad like shit. Yeah. Uh, oh. So Brad and they, his vests. <laughs> right. 
I know. What a freaking cutie, though. Mm. Um, so she, like, goes home and is like, you both forgot parent-teacher conferences. And they're like, oh, my gosh, we just have this big advertising shoot tomorrow. We're so sorry. But, like, can we make it up to you? Um, we'll put you in the commercial. And then um, she's in the bed of a U-Haul truck. And <laughs> somehow it is magically lifted that she's in the truck and is not going to come out. And she's dressed as the diaper. Um, and she's like, I'm not, I'm not. Doing I want this. a different part. <laughs> Iconic. Yeah. Iconic. And then she's just straight up being gaslit by Albert, who is an awful, awful man, oh. um, which I have to only assume most men in a role like that are just assholes. Um, if you've watched Entourage, he gave off very um, Ari vibes. Yeah, I mean, he's an agent. That's yeah. literally what he's doing. Yeah. So. Uh. <laughs> Erica works for agents. She, she, she abstains from some commenting. No She's comment. like, yeah. Erica just lost her voice, everyone. Uh, this is weird. No, she just got it back. Okay, great. So Brad yells at her because her parents aren't, or his parents aren't around. So they get in a little fight after that. And then she has another talk with her teacher because she's upset. And he's like, I don't think that George Washington magnet school is actually what you want to do. And you can do other avenues. And I also want to put your art in the main exhibit in the art show. And, um, she's super excited and she tells her parents and they're actually really excited for her. They, she thought that they were going to be upset and be like, where did science go? But they're actually like, Oh my gosh, we're so happy for you and this opportunity. And we didn't really understand that you like this, but we can't wait to come to your art show on Saturday night. Um, but then they get invited by the governor, um, to the parents of the year. <laughs> dinner on saturday at the same time no date just saturday no date just saturday <laughs> um so then when jamie is originally very excited for them and they say yes they are coming um and then she looks at the invitation it says saturday and she runs to school and rips up all of her art and this, this is what erica was mentioning earlier yeah. yeah and this is also a moment that i remembered as well and it is probably so far, probably one of the most heartbreaking scenes that we've seen in a decom. And it's acted so well. I, mean, I got emotional watching it mm-hmm. now. Like, she is she's, so good. Yeah. She um, also does, like, right when she reads the, um, the invitation and realizes, she does, like, a full-blown lip quiver. And, like, normally I would be like, that's, like, too much. But it, like, looked real. Yeah. Like, it looked like she was... She's totally... Cr- like, yeah. she... Uh, she was like completely like overcome like you could just see like the wave of emotion like washing yeah. over her and then she runs and that's when she does the Insane. tearing it's great um so she runs to school rips up and she's like i'm not going to be in the art exhibit anymore and her friends are there to support her and these truly two of the best friends you could ever ask <laughs> for like they support her even the teachers like okay and then she's in art class and then the the like principal or the dean comes around and uh they find out that one of the babies adam number one is in the hospital um so it takes one of the babies getting sick for all of them to like come together the parents and jamie finally connect she says i found art i found myself i found me the parents kind of apologize and we're like we just understand mom admits to like when you said that quince line like that really hit us hard and so then albert shows up at the hospital and he's freaking out and they're like how are we going to replace adam let's just get a um, another baby to replace him for the next two weeks while he's can't do it and literally without talking about it dad just goes you're fired and they fire Albert. Um, but they still get to go to the parents of the year dinner. So, um, Jamie is like, cool. Like I'm going to go to the art show. You guys go like they're on really good terms now. Um, she doesn't tell them. She doesn't remind them about the art show. Right. So she she just is like, so mature. She's Mm -hmm. awesome. So she lets them go. And her plan is to, is to just go to the show. Um, no, she's planning to babysit the kids. Uh, she's not even planning to go to the art show. I missed that probably because I wasn't paying attention. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she was planning to babysit. So they get to the the parents of the year dinner and the governor's like, okay, cool, you're here. Where are the babies? And they're like, <laughs> we didn't bring the babies. And the governor's like, <laughs> okay, this is a joke. <laughs> My name's Don Knotts. Where are the babies? 
And um, they're like, we didn't bring the babies. And he's like, are you kidding me? Like we, and then on the invitation, it says parents and Quince. So at the same time, Jamie was looking at the invitation and realized that it says and Quince and calls her teacher and says, hey, can you drive me there, her two friends come, the car breaks down. So her and her two van, van yeah, the, the VW, VW bus. Van, van. <laughs> um, bus. So the 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 Beatles van uh, breaks down, um, which was a staple of this entire movie. That wasn't yeah, mentioned the most right on brand car T- that art, that person would teacher drive. Car. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then they take a bus and they take a train and they are trying to get these babies to the the parents' dinner. And as they're on the train, these really buff biker dudes walk up and they're like, oh, no, they're going to take our babies. And, <laughs> and they just took them right to the to the governor. And they they the motorcycle guys got them there in time. Um, and so then they were really happy to be there. And the governor is super happy um, that the babies finally showed up. And she's like, OK, you guys have fun. And then the governor's like, oh, my driver can take you anywhere. And so now she's like oh, take me to the art show. And so then they get to the art show and it's time for the big moment of um, like, who's going to win the blue ribbon at the art show? And what do you know? Her parents show up um, and she won. So they didn't stay at the thing. And guess who also showed up? The governor. (laughs) Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Um, (laughs) And all of his secret service men are holding these babies (laughs) Oh, which really makes no sense. Um, but she she wins the art show um, because of a picture of her five uh, siblings that she had drawn very beautifully. And we find out at the very end, it's kind of like a fast forward in time. She got into George Washington Magnet School. She decided not to go. And then there's this bit at the end, kind of uh, the like, I tricked you, where mom is pregnant again and she's having seven kids. Ha, 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 ha. Need you look. And that's the movie. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Overall, not awful, but I I didn't definitely didn't give enough credit during to the two best friends of Zoe and Brad. Mm. Zoe is one of the best friends you can have where she's like, you should join art club with me. And she is so supportive of the fact that her friend is better in art than her, where mm-hmm. she's like, oh, art's my thing. But like, you should do it with me, where I feel like most movies would be like, oh, well, now we're not friends anymore because you're better at art than me. Where, no, she was mm-hmm. super supportive of it. And I just thought that was um, a really cool uh, char- characteristic of Zoe. Totally. Well, I think, like, she, both she and the art teacher, and I think this there's a reason for this, had, like, good perspective on life, right? And mm-hmm. I think that, like, that's sort of what this whole story is about, is, like, your perspective, um, like there's literally a discussion of like how to draw a por- portrait at one point. Um, and I think that like they represent sort of like having things in perspective, right? Like it doesn't matter. Like she enjoys art as an outlet. It doesn't matter if her friend is better or not. She's just yeah. enjoying what she's doing. Right. Whereas like the whole concept of the plan and we cannot deviate from the plan is like a different perspective where you can't see anything. You can't see the forest for the trees. Right. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. She's a great friend. And I think that's like why, because she's kind of like Zen, for lack of a better word. Like she's just kind of like cool with whatever. And there's also like Brad, who's sort of trying to show perspective in a different way where he's like, I have a shitty life. Like you need to put things into perspective. Like your life is much better than mine. (laughs) Yeah. He says something like, I think it's when her parents don't go to the student, the teacher meetings or whatever, where he's like, well, I when I do things well, I feel I feel good. And that's like the point of things. And like, it shouldn't be for someone else. Right. Right. Which is like, so good. Thanks, mm-hmm. Brett. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do things for you, baby. Yeah. Also, yeah, Albert, we didn't talk that much about it, Albert, but like, man, he Sucks. is a piece of shit. Um, yeah, and he I'm says so outright, one thing that is like worth saying, like explicitly is that like right at the beginning, he says to her, to Jamie, like, you are not a part of this. Like the yeah. brand is the quintuplets. And so like, you have to kind of grow up and deal with that. And then at the end, the line that gets him like fired is something like, you know, you're not a part of this or something like that. Like he says that to Jamie, like you are not a part of this. And her dad just like turns around and is like, excuse me. (laughs) Like, what the fuck are you talking about? So I thought that was really cool because it gave the dad 
a chance to sort of like show like, no, I absolutely prioritize my daughter above like making money or like fame or any other BS. All right. Shall we move right along? Yeah, let's do it. To Bango. 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 Q I N T S Q I N T S Q I N T S and Quince Bingo. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's happening. All right. Welcome to Bingo. Erica, since you're here with us today, let's have you start. Great. One hit wonder song? I'm going to say no. Yeah, right? the, the song during the montage was a Britney Spears song, and I didn't hear any other songs. It was? Yeah, I shazammed it twice because I was like, this can't be right. <laughs> it's a song called Soda Pop by Britney oh, Spears. F- I oh, my God. Me and Erica life. both got our phones to look this <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is not. This, Shazam is wrong. And I did it again in a different part of the song, and it did the same thing again. Oh, my um, God. Yeah, it's funny because we've had in sync in the last or no, we'll have in sync next week. And we had Britney Spears this week. Wow. <laughs> so All right. No working one hit through, wonder. The, through the Mouseketeers here. Uh, breaking the fourth wall or looking into, into the camera. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> I'm I'm coloring this box in. <laughs> <laughs> it's just black. Yeah, it's not. It's it's not an X. It's colored in. <laughs> uh, holiday themed birthday. Well, M- Allie, you wanted to do birthday. I don't know if I. I don't know if I can go along with. Wait, that. no, Val. This is our Christmas episode. Can you just put a Christmas tree on it? Fine, I'll put a Christmas tree. But just is like it you counting? did for Halloween. Yeah, but it's, it doesn't, doesn't count. count. No, it doesn't no. count. Okay, it's just okay. because it's Christmas. Okay, fine. Okay. You get your Christmas present. Yay. <laughs> um, clunky metaphor. Well, we talked a little bit about like the whole perspective thing, like painting. You could count that, like where he literally said, what did he say? He was like, see the details, see the essence, see the soul or something. Like he's like literally like walking her through <clears throat> like how to paint a portrait yeah and like i don't know i feel like that could that could definitely count for this cool parents who just don't get it yeah yeah for a yeah. while in this movie they do not get it cool non-parent adult yeah mr blackwell oh, or blackner or whatever his name he is. is so cool uh yeah he's great this is gonna be controversial um <laughs> someone too famous for a tv movie i'm gonna say no <laughs> That's my vote on the matter. <laughs> You're just mad at Don Knotts' character, oh okay? You're right. I know I am. I'm taking it out on him. <laughs> but <laughs> I did. There was something like, I know you didn't like how they wrote his character, but there was something to me that was enjoyable about this like guy who's been doing this his whole career. And one of the last things he does is he just gets to come in and just be silly in this movie. Like he just gets to be this guy. He's rolling like, her eyes. Right where now? are the babies? <laughs> I don't know why I thought he was just so rude. Like he was like, this is a disaster. Like how you idiot. Why would you think I want just you? Like he was so mean to them. Yeah, he I was. He, no, he I was, was really so offended. mean to them. <laughs> he it was. was, but it like cracked me up. I don't know. I just, it was probably just because it was Don Knotts, which to me says that he is too famous. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For okay. sure. <laughs> Competition to resolve central problem. Nope. I have an argument. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. The art show. Yeah, but it's not resolving the problem. But her parents show up for her finally. That's true. But like, she's not like competing against someone else to like deal with something in the. It's still story. competition. I know, but Erica, what's your views? I thought it was a competition because our show. Okay, then we can count it. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Montage sequence. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just mentioned again the Britney Spears song plays under the montage where mom doesn't get pregnant. I still, I cannot believe that's Britney Spears. (laughs) Make it up. Um, cliche villains, the agent. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's so true. He is absolutely a cliche. And Brad's parents. (laughs) I'm like, I guess there's no like 
I defeated, this is the enemy and I defeated them because it's such an internal conflict of like right. just finding girl who finds herself story as yeah. we're told at the right. beginning. But Albert kind of like is like the physical manifestation of yeah. the like ignoring her and she's not the priority anymore and all of that stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Clothes or items you owned. <gasps> Val's p- p- bringing us an item. <gasps> she literally wow. wears this shirt in the first minutes of the ep- of the movie and she spills on herself wearing this shirt. It is literally the same shirt. Like it's a boat neck. It's it like I almost wore it because I was like, it fits exactly the way that it fits her. Also, she has we talked about this in the, well, we will talk about this in the other me as well, but she has a translucent cordless VTAC phone that's green. And I had the purple version. Mm-hmm. And in the other me, he has the red version. Oh my God. So Gosh. yeah. Did either of you have anything? I saw that she had a hair clip and it was oh, a specific yeah. hair clip with the, was it the flower, the flower. Yeah. I had that too. Yeah. <laughs> Erica, I had you- the, Butterfly clips. Oh, yeah. yeah. She was also, her and her mom were rocking. Yeah. I definitely had those. As Which well. are now back in style. Oh, People yeah. People are wearing really? them again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. The youths. I'm not mad there. that the 90s are coming back, honestly. I'm not mad. I'm at mostly it. not mad, but I can't do crop tops. So that's the only one I'm mm. not super. You can do into. anything that you have the confidence to wear, Val. <laughs> yeah. According to the teacher, your future lies with you. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm also 35, and I think that's... Uh-oh, you can wear whatever you want, Val. <laughs> oh, dear. Rotten Tomatoes, 40 to 60. So the way that we do this is I don't look up what the Rotten Tomatoes is. Al knows what it is. Erica, did you already look it up? No. Okay, so you and I can both guess what we think it is. It can be any number. It doesn't have to be between 40 and 60, but if we... If it if we get it right or within five, we just get to feel cool and that we guessed it right. If we get it between 40 and six or if it is between 40 and 60, we get this bingo square. OK, OK. Look, I'm a fan. I'm going to go with a 65. Wow. wow. OK, OK. I do feel like this one's going to be more highly rated just because it's Kimberly J. Brown. And it's more well known. So I'm going to guess I'm going to guess 63. Good news. You're both wrong. It's 50. <laughs> Oh, it is it is a straight up five zero. Well, we got the bingo square. We did get the bingo square. Um, happily ever after. I would say yes. I think yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost kissing. Um, yeah, no, 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 almost kissing. Nope, no, no romance. Platonic. Like yeah. A strength of this. Honestly, yeah. I'm really glad that they didn't have like Marnie and Brad be a couple you know i agree i agree or zoe and brad either yeah. way it was just, just like we are pals. good friends yeah. three pals um, just like us three pals yeah also this has nothing to do with kissing but we talk about this whenever this happens and she had two parents who despite having moments where they were not the greatest parents in this movie for the most part were good parents who had a healthy relationship with each other mm-hmm. and if anything the mom might have made more money than the dad <laughs> so uh I thought all of that was kind of nice. Yeah. Um, he was definitely, uh, if you're wondering this week, he definitely fits into the cool dad category. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not so much hot dad. No, he I was cool say, dad. But cool dad for sure. Yeah. Uh oh, Erica's got a thing for it's daddy. Like cute. I don't know. He's <laughs> kind of, I, love like, pout. I like him as a human. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a pouty little, little lips. Little lips. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a recent picture of him and he looks good still. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I just you go saw to his IMDb page. Yeah. He's basically just like the same except a little salt and peppery. Yeah, he looks good. Someone who became famous. Did we count Kimberly J. Brown last time? I don't remember, but I feel like we should now because she's a really good actor. Yeah, and also she is famous. She's not famous necessarily for like acting. Right. She is like influencer famous. Yeah, she has a fandom. Um, betraying of one's real friends or values. She definitely doesn't. I was wondering whether or not we would count like the parents kind of losing their way for a little bit in the movie. Hmm. What are your thoughts? I, I want, I say yes. Erica? I say no. Val? Uh Uh-oh. I feel like we've had this discussion before and we have only counted it when it was the lead. Great. So let's just say no. Okay. Okay. Your childhood crush. 
I think that I liked Brad. I remember having a crush I, on Brad. I kind of remember liking Brad because he's like the nerdy little Jewish boy. I would have been all all about that at that age. Yeah. <laughs> so for sure. Obviously bad special effects or stunts. The arms growing and yeah. when they jokingly put the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. Down. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Von Denton. Kirsten Storms, Ryan Merriman, Kimberly J. Brown, any Lawrence brother. Yes. Got it. Yes. Got it. Yep. We have a KJB baby. Um, all right. Sad, sad news. Musical number. <laughs> <laughs> no musical number. No musical number. Magic. Uh, I don't think there's magic in this one. But at the exactly at the 17 minute mark, <laughs> someone there was says a, the title of the movie. There was movie magic, baby. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they also say it a million other they times. Yeah. But. That's so funny. <laughs> Amazing. Um, the next box is Scooby Dude. Kinda, yeah. The kids like do all the transportation yeah. and like, find their way oh, yeah. to She really does get a there. lot in this movie. She really does. But like, like definitely them like the running around, like carrying like two baby carriers each, like all that stuff yeah. that felt very Scooby Doo to me. Yeah. The heroes create the problem. Nope. <laughs> Mom, Mom and dad Mom loved and each dad other very much. Like <laughs> each other. Too much. <laughs> created five problems. <laughs> um, lead is a fish out of water. No, no, nope. Wow. All right, Al, what's the verdict? Wait. We got two bingos. <gasps> two bingos. Two bingos. <laughs> Can you imagine if I was like, we got five. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got two bingos. We have um, both of the second rows. So the second vertical and the second horizontal row. Um, so I blocked it out. I literally scribbled all over it, but it's breaking the fourth wall <laughs> looking in the camera. Someone too famous for a TV movie. Rotten Tomatoes, 40 to 60, your childhood crush. And someone says the title of the movie. So that's our vertical line. And our horizontal line, we have cool non-parent adult, someone too famous for a TV movie, competition to resolve central problem, a montage <laughs> sequence, and cliche villain. Nice. So thank you, Don Knotts, for getting us two Thank you, bingos. Don Knotts. <laughs> and the art show. <laughs> um, all right. Well, last but not least, we have a game to play. All right. We're going to play What Celebrity Baby Is This? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, welcome to what celebrity baby is this is i'm gonna show you a celebrity as a baby and you're gonna have to guess what celebrity it is um share screen all right here we go you get okay you get three points if you can get it on the first try and then i'll give you two guesses um but you get <laughs> points taken away for each guess okay uh, Can so, I ask a question? Yes. Like, what a celebrity like? Um, actor, these are like, is there uh, any... actually these are all musical artists. <laughs> oh, oh, this okay. Okay. okay, okay. So these are all musical artists. That won't count as a clue, but these are all musical artists. Is mm. this Bruno Mars? <laughs> okay, your answer. Your question, Val. Do you have a guess? <sighs> I didn't even think about that. It could be a boy. Um. Oh, whoops. Uh, Ariana Grande. <laughs> okay, so Val is closer. Your clue now for two points is it is a Disney Channel star. Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. I think of Selena Gomez as an actor, so I didn't even like think yeah. when you said musical artist, I changed my guess. I guess she's both in the Disney Channel realm. Fair. Fair. All right. Or her song, can't keep my hands to myself, would disagree with you. Uh, <laughs> all right, we have number two. Oh, my God. Adele. Oh, that's definitely Adele, yeah. Erica, three points. Yes! <laughs> wow, dude, Adele. she literally looks exactly She looks exactly She looks older. Same. She looks yeah. older. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She looks like a 40-year-old woman. <laughs> that's so funny. <sighs> um, number three. Um, oh, 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 Styles. First name? It's either Harry or Henry. 
It is Harry Styles. <laughs> of course you picked Harry Styles. I'm, okay, but look how cute he is. <laughs> That's a cute, is cute little dude. Those eyes. Oh, my God. I love him. <laughs> All right. Last one. Oh, my God. <laughs> is that Lizzo? Uh, Mel! <laughs> <laughs> Mel with three points! <laughs> All right. So cute with wow. That is That's such a good picture. <laughs> great. great job, Mel. Um, well, uh, after after our four point or our after our four questions, Erica wins by one point. Yay! Well, thank you, thank you. Congrats. Um, congratulations <laughs> to all who played. No, main celebrity, baby picture. <laughs> um, cool. Well, wow, Erica, thank you so much for joining us. Oh my god, thank you for having me. This was delightful. Where can people find you? I'm on Twitter all the time. Um, Erica with a K from Maine is my name. And complaining is my game. So <laughs> follow me on Twitter. That's where I am. <laughs> Erica is one of the funniest people I've ever known. So you should definitely follow her on Twitter. Oh my God. Honored. Thank you. Oh. Well, um, it's been real and it's been fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here. Bye, Val. Bye, Al. Bye, Erica. Bye. This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at thetridentnetwork.com slash decommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at decommentaries. Decommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Ellie.